When fitting specialty contact lenses, and sometimes even with soft contact lenses, it is important to know the true shape of the cornea for the best comfort and vision for the patient. In this video, I'll introduce you to an important instrument we use to map out the hills and valleys of the cornea. Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Natalie Chai. This channel brings you the latest science-based education and treatments in dry eye disease, myopia management, and specialty contact lenses to help you understand why it should matter to you for optimal eye health, function, comfort, and even beauty. With contact lenses, most people get by and do just fine with the commercially available soft contact lenses. But for those who require a specialty contact lens, we have to take out our tape measure just as you would for any custom design, like a suit or a dress or a custom built home. Because the cornea is a clear piece of tissue, it is near impossible for us to visualize the shape of the cornea with just the naked eye, even underneath the microscope. This brings us to a brief segment to the history of corneal topography. Number one, history. One of the earliest advancements in assessing the shape of the anterior or front surface of the cornea was in the late 1800s. This was with the observation of these concentric rings from the reflection off of the cornea. This eventually gave rise to the development of the placido disc. The concentric rings of the placido disc are reflected off of the cornea. Now these reflections are referred to as mires and these mires are then captured by a digital camera. The pattern of light reflection reveals the shape of the anterior surface of the cornea. The reflected rings are now processed by the software to provide more detailed information than ever before. This technique provides a very detailed two-dimensional scan of the front surface of the cornea. In order to collect a clear image, the epithelial layer of the cornea in addition to the tear film must be intact. Further advancements now include a scanning slit technique which provides images of both the anterior and the posterior cornea. The new kit on the block nowadays is the usage of the Schleim Fluke imaging. This provides a high 3D accuracy and resolution of the cornea. This is definitely on my wish list in the future. Number two, placido disc interpretation. The appearance of the Myers is what the software interprets to determine the shape of the cornea. In short, areas where the Myers are closer together correspond to a steeper corneal curvature, and the further apart the Myers are, the flatter the corneal curvature. A perfectly spherical eyeball would demonstrate equally spaced Myers over its entire surface. However, most people have variations where we would sometimes note distortion or wavy Myers. Most software now incorporate a color scale which really helps us visualize the cornea. The great thing about the Placido Disc technology is that it also gives us an idea to how healthy a person's tear film is in the context of dry eye disease. When the Myers are crisp and distinct, we can infer that the tear film is relatively healthy, while a wavy pattern can point to a cornea with surface dryness. Number three, the Medmont E300 Corneal Topographer. The Medmont E300 is an instrument I use in both myopia management and also specialty contact lenses. I had the privilege of first learning about this fantastic instrument when I was in optometry school and proud to say that I was taught by first-class professors who are also the top leaders in the world when it comes to specialty contact lenses. When doing my own research on the diagnostic and instruments that does corneal topography, this was high on my list naturally. There are a few key features of the Medmont E300. The Medmont E300 is considered the gold standard for fitting specialty lenses. It uses the Placido Disc technology and has the largest coverage of all placido ring topographers. This is what we call limbus to limbus coverage. In basic anatomy, the limbus of the eye is defined as the transitional zone between the cornea and the sclera. Under the microscope, it is a band that is approximately 1.5 to 2 millimeters wide encircling the periphery of the cornea. This is important especially when fitting scleral lenses for example. These lenses not only vault entirely over the cornea, but you also need to clear the limbal zone as well. So knowing the shape of not only just the cornea but with the limbal zone is critical when designing the lens and also determining the overall diameter of the specialty lens. The Medmont E300 is also extremely 
accurate. It has a standard deviation of error of less than two microns. To put that into perspective, the average human hair thickness is 75 microns. This topographer is known as a small cone system because, well, of the smaller cone design compared to other designs with a large cone system. Small cone designs collect more data points and are ultimately more accurate. However, it can be more challenging when trying to manipulate on a patient with deeper set eyes. The Medmont has 32 rings while the large cone design, such as in the example of the Oculus Keratograph 5M, only has 22 rings. Although, a more fair comparison should be between small cone design to another small cone design. So other small cone systems such as the Keratron from Opticon has 28 rings. The Medmont E300 was very well thought out in the ease for the operator and the comfort for the patient. It uses a simple alignment system where the maps are automatically captured when aligned correctly. The data is obtained quickly in just seconds. For the patient, it may seem a little daunting because the cone comes pretty close to the eye. However, it really just cups the eye but never touches it. The red rings may be a little bright and psychedelic for some, but don't worry, it is entirely safe. Lastly, the instrument itself is compact and very small in footprint while maintaining great performance and reliability. Number four, analyzing maps and displays. After collecting the data points, the software of the Medmont E300 will analyze and calculate certain characteristics of the cornea, such as the power and the shape. While the generated maps are definitely pretty to look at, there are dozens of different display options that give us different information. Number five, examples of common eye conditions using the Medmont topographer. Just for fun, I'd like to show you some examples examples of what certain corneal conditions, both normal and abnormal, can look like when using the corneal topographer. Corneal topography can help us identify the presence of corneal astigmatism and to also classify the type of astigmatism. Simply, astigmatism is the irregularity in the corneal shape that causes blurriness and distortion in vision at all distances. Your optometrist may have described your eye as having more of a football shape than a basketball shape. If you'd like to learn an understand more around astigmatism, check out Dr. Joseph Allen's fantastic video on his YouTube channel at Dr. Eye Health. This is an example of a type of symmetric or regular astigmatism we would classify as with the rule. It has a very nice hourglass or figure eight shape. With the rule, astigmatism is steeper along the 90 degree meridian or the vertical. Here is an example of the opposite to with the rule astigmatism. We call this against the rule astigmatism. Now the hourglass or figure eight shape is in essence is rotated 90 degrees with the steep meridian along the 180 degree or horizontal. The shape is sometimes known as the bow tie. Sometimes the steep meridian of astigmatism for some people may lie along the 30 to 60 degree meridian or the 120 to 150 degree meridian. This type of astigmatism is less common when compared to the other two and this is known as oblique astigmatism. Now here here are some examples of what the corneal topography looks like of irregular corneal astigmatism and in corneal eye diseases such as keratoconus and postcorneal transplants. Mapping out the hills and valleys of the cornea is extremely crucial when fitting specialty contact lenses. Now steeper corneas need deeper lenses, other corneas may need a larger diameter, and others may need minor adjustments in just one specific zone of the contact lens for better comfort. The design combinations are limitless and essentially infinite. Having the Medmont topographer has helped in the efficiency of fitting specialty lenses and increased my first fit success rate drastically. I do want to mention that I empirically fit these lenses using a fitting set and that having the topographer is an extra tool to more accurately choose the right initial lens in the fitting process. So here it is. This is another one of my nifty instruments I use and can't imagine practicing without it nowadays. That's it for me today. There are other great small cone topographers out there in the market and by no means am I bashing the other contenders. I've just had the greatest exposure and experience with the Medmont and not to mention they have an excellent support team helping me along the way. It's just a matter of preference and choosing between say a Honda or a Toyota. Bad example maybe but I hope you get the point. If this is your first time to the channel and you enjoy learning about topics in dry eye disease, myopia management or specialty contact lenses, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification notification bell for my new video every Thursday. Take care of your eyes and we'll see you next week.